today we're talking about a really neat and rare South American cichlid. Let's talk about that. Welcome to another episode of Ocean State Aquatics TV with me, Salty Alley, here at our Wakefield location. And we really hope you guys had a wonderful holiday yesterday. Today, we're talking about a really cool, rare South American cichlid, the zebra acaras. We got these guys probably about a month ago. So they've been here quite a long time, but they are just super, super neat and they get overlooked kind of often. So I wanted to do a little spotlight on them so you guys can learn more about them. Zebra acaras are native to Brazil and the Rio Negro. They come from very tan and rich environments with a slightly acidic water. Water. So usually in the drier season, the water becomes very, very dark with humic acid and tannins. So they do best in an aquarium where you add driftwood and leaf litter to the tank, like almond leaves. Being from South America, these cichlids really prefer a nice warm water, typically in the low 80s. So we like to keep the tank around 80 to 82 degrees. Providing these fish with really nice pieces of wood in the tank that give you lots of shaded areas is best because they do come from very dark water. So they don't like super bright lights. So giving them places where they can hide and be shaded from the light is a great idea and it will help mimic their natural environment very well. You get the best colors out of these fish when you are able to mimic that environment because they feel most at home. Also feeding them a high quality frozen or live food diet is best and will help bring those colors out even better. Zebra cars get about five inches full grown, the female's a little bit smaller. The males get these absolutely beautiful, long dorsal and anal fins, and they get amazing coloration when they're in breeding. And even when they're not breeding, the males and females are really, really pretty, and they get their characteristic stripes, hence the name Zebra Acara. The males, especially when in breeding, they get almost like a bluish gray coloration with black vertical stripes, and they just look super, super cool. Even the females, like I said, when they're breeding, they're very pretty as well. They get kind of like an orangish pink coloration, and you get some striping as well. Zebra acaras can live up to five years in captivity. Even though these cichlids are relatively small, they're actually quite aggressive. They really are best kept in a species only with small, slower moving tetras that they can't eat. So doing things like bleeding heart tetras, and other larger species like that they'll do really well with, but it's tough mixing them with other cichlids. In my display tank right now, I actually have them in my 90.3 and I'm kind of experimenting a little bit. It's a big enough tank and I added two small juveniles and I have them with a electric blue acara and I have some big bleeding hearts in there and a royal acara and we're kind of going to see how it works out. Uh, but like I said, these guys are a bit aggressive so you just have to keep an eye on them, especially as they become adults. Right now they're very peaceful and it's working out great, but we'll have to see how it goes. When you're keeping them in a smaller aquarium, this is where you really have to keep that in mind. If you wanted to do a really awesome Amazon biotope tank these would be a perfect fish for that because they're absolutely gorgeous you could do a pair in there with schooling tetras and it would look fantastic as I mentioned before they will do like a more acidic pH so they're best kept at 5 5 to 6 8 in that range all of the specimens I have here are still juveniles but they are starting to get really cool coloration you can kind of tell which ones are going to be male which are female but it's not 100% guaranteed so sometimes it's a good idea to get a small group of them and then let them pair off naturally but I would only recommend doing this in a larger aquarium so they have plenty of space when they do pair off. If you don't, we can usually do our best guess on which one's male, which one's female at this point in time. The minimum tank size I would recommend for these is about 40 gallons. Anything smaller than that is going to be a little too cramped for them and especially if you're keeping them with other fish you'll see a lot more aggression in a smaller tank and as I said they do get about five inches so you want to make sure you're providing them plenty of room to kind of show their natural behaviors and be able to swim around comfortably and not be aggressive with each other. If you do end up getting multiple males in the tank, you will definitely get territory issues. In a larger tank, you may be able to be successful with it, but in something like 40 gallons, I would suggest trying to only stick to one male and one female. These are more bottom dwelling cichlids, so if you are to keep them with other fish, try to avoid other bottom dwelling fish because you may get some territory issues with that as well. That's why I say swimming tetras up at the surface or up in the middle column of the tank are best because you really won't get much aggression issues there. These fish are super rare in the hobby. You don't ever really see them available, so we're really excited to have them here, and I hope you guys come on in and check them out because they're fantastic. And I'm also gonna have Danny put some pictures of adults in there so you can kind of get an idea of what they will look like. Because right now they're not super colorful. They don't have those adult colorations. But once they're big and they're, especially if you get a pair and they're breeding, amazing. Super cool fish. You guys definitely gotta come in and check them out. Thank you so much for watching today's episode on our little species profile. We hope you guys enjoy and you know what to do. Keep it fresh, baby.